My trial mode is looking at the move list. Okay. Oh, sweet Jesus. How many moves? Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, cool. Awesome. Cool. that you can still do this with Slayer and Guilty Gear Xard? The dash must be Tiger Need, making the execution slightly more challenging. Difficult to say if one is stronger, since they operate in different ecosystems. Although save for range, their stats are comparable. This is how the majority of simplifications were executed between Plus R and Xard. While there are less tools in the kit, each one has far more applications. The simplification is surface level with focus on raising utility and variability. The experienced player cleanly combining Slayer's actions feels accomplished. Someone is in the audience, in awe of the experienced player's abilities. They pick up Exard, and while it's still complex, there is less to initially process. In cases like in Senga, there was a thematical sacrifice in favor of clarity. It can be debated which looks cooler, but Aerial Mist Finer is far more versatile. Slashback was a system mechanic that was introduced in Accent Core. It's a better instant block that leaves you vulnerable for 30 frames on whiff. It was hype, but there is no strategic decision to be made between the two. Optimal says we should slashback everything. Safe says instant block. Xart Sign replaced Slashback with Blitz Shield. Blitz Shield would be like an instant block, but give more time to react for 25 meter. It was a safe decision, considering the battle-tested system predates Exar. Now, 25 meter turns you into a damn wall for 8 seconds. It added new combos too. FRC, or False Roman Cancel, is a system mechanic that was introduced in Guilty Gear X2. It made a few attacks cancelable for 25 meter regardless of whiff or hit. It was performed by Roman cancelling within a predetermined one frame window, invisible outside of training mode with inputs enabled. This window doubled in the next game. Force Break was a system mechanic that was introduced in Accent Core. Some had unique hit properties, but their faster speed was most apparent. This next part is going to blow your mind. Fafnir. Force Break Fafnir. YRC Fafnir. Speed doubled. Time stop removed. Save for unique attack properties, YRC puts all potential speed and frame advantage benefits of the average Force Break into whatever we please. YRC gives Guilty Gear Exod less total systems, and a lower barrier of entry. YRC also gives Exod a high precision utility with more ways to apply it. It's like Exod's sign was eliminating redundancies or something. If the force break thing didn't blow your mind, did you know that you can YRC in plus R? Now let's compare. Simplicity represents complexity of first contact, as well as ease of understanding. There are 81 character-specific force breaks and 232 attack-specific false roman cancels. If we want to understand the nature of each of them, research of over 300 different attacks is required. Executing most of them requires a dive into frame data. There's one yellow roman cancel, and it's universal. If we want to understand the nature of it, research of the early tutorial is required. Depth represents the number of different situations something can solve, and number of ways it can be used. The 81 force breaks can be executed one way each. The 232 FRC points can be executed on one of two frames. That's 545 total for the 313 mechanics. YRC can be executed on any start frame of any attack. You must also factor in the variation that comes from YRC's manipulation of our opponent's frame data. I'll tell you right now, Guilty Gear is fucking tight. The music's fantastic, the character designs are incredibly cool, the game has a humongous amount of depth to it. You start to play it, you're having some fun, you play somebody, they beat you up, you're like, that guy is fucking good, he's doing some crazy shit. You type into YouTube, and you watch a high-level match, and you're like, this game is fucking incredible. It looks so fast. That guy is playing the same character as me, but he's moving six times faster than me. 
I have no idea how he's doing that. This game's sick. What is our incentive to move forward in Guilty Gear? When we approach our opponent, we gain more than just horizontal space. Moving forward builds up our tension, and raises our tension pulse. Initiating a forward dash of any kind gives us a generous surge of both. Tension pulse is a stat that governs a general tension gain multiplier. Tension is our life, as it allows us to use Faultless Defense, which lets us move safely in neutral. Roman Cancels, which can make nearly every attack safe. Demonstrating a proficiency with these makes our tension seem threatening. That threat makes us scarier. Once our opponent is scared of us, we reset. If we're consistent, the entire cycle repeats. Attack inertia is a simple physics system that applies to the horizontal axis. It rewards clean execution with potential for a high degree of variability. It allows dashing to indirectly boost our damage by countering pushback. To prevent infinites, every beat in a Guilty Gear combo increases pushback. Cancelling actions that create horizontal movement increases our inertia. After cancelling, any horizontal impulse is stacked onto current velocity. Ground friction and walls are the only things slowing us down. If it's not boosting our damage, it's giving us advantage to start up in neutral. Arxis made a fighting game once that turns this concept up to 11. It's called Hokuto no Ken, and it's remarkable. A combination of predictable systems working together towards a result. Change within one system can heavily impact the frames that follow. Rushdown Incentive and Attack Inertia are both strong influencers. These are the systems that, when not understood or felt, will make us lose. These are the systems that reward the cleanest execution and awareness. The one-frame throw is our strongest tool in this area. The exchange becomes, are they in range? Are they invulnerable? Which player was faster? Throws are the layer beneath the spacing game we play with attacks like 2P. The nuance of their timing is within 0.032 seconds of one another. This is why a throw clash is so hype. Other contributors are the character-specific stats and mechanics. Consider variable weights, wake-ups, hurt boxes, guts, modifiers, and more. There is clear intention to obfuscate predictability with predictable systems. Also, Tuner. The final patch that Guilty Gear Exarch received was Rev 2.1. The changes overall felt experimental. Various characters were rebalanced in two notable ways. One, an air attack was tuned with incentive to Tiger Knee. Two, a timing window produced asymptotic results per frame. The focus seemed to be on rewarding cleaner execution with higher rewards. Some things already worked like this, so as of now, here are some examples. Chemical Love, Task B, Scharf Kugel, Bandit Bringer, Slayer, the variability comes from any small delay in the button timing after jumping. Some error still produces useful options, and variability in between. Then there were changes like decelerating dashes and accelerating pushback. Properties like these allow for more aggressive use of advancing attacks, while still rewarding and punishing proper spacing. Soul's dash starts fast, slows down quickly, and slowly speeds back up. This pattern appears in many other instances and variations, but why? Tighter execution when cancelling results in higher attack inertia. These changes can create stronger options for precision spacing and timing. So now we have a fighting game that increases our character's potential power and resources relative only to our precision. A fighting game that reduces the total number of systems a new player must learn while increasing the number of ways we can use each system. Now imagine someone redesigning their game from the ground up, with these concepts at its foundation. Nothing else.